हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन सो वेलकम टू बाजूज एग्जाम प्रेप यस तो टेल मी वीडियो एंड ऑडियो इज एब्सोल्युटली फाइन और नॉट जस्ट टेल मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन वेदर द वीडियो एंड द ऑडियो क्वालिटी आर एब्सोल्युटली फाइन और नॉट सो एज पर योर डिमांड एंड यू गाइस टोल्ड मी दैट यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन लर्निंग द ट्रांसमिशन लाइन आउट ऑफ ऑल द सिलेबस ऑफ ई एम एफ टी ई सी सो दैट इज वाई वी आर ब्रिंगिंग द स्पेशल सेशन फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड दे आर ट्रांसमिशन लाइन एंड एंटीना सो दीज टू टॉपिक्स वी विल बी कवरिंग एंटायरली विद द डिटेल कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक यू हैव सीन दैट इन द कम्युनिकेशन और इन द अदर सब्जेक्ट वी हैव महा मैराथन सीरीज बट हियर वी आर actually uh, covering the entire syllabus of the transmission line because uh, you guys demanded for it yes yes uh, akash gasturi good evening good evening yes gorav thank you and uh, let's begin the session with the brief introduction so this is aket verma and i am having more than 12 year experience of teaching and i have done mtech from iit guwahati and i teach subject electromagnetic theory so for EMT double E. I have already taken the marathon series, and me and uh, Rakesh sir both uh, we have taken that and uh, communication system and advanced communication system, signals and system also I am teaching now, uh, especially in the our app by the exam prep app. Yes, Sonali, good evening. So you guys told us that day that uh, you are interested in learning the transmission line. So I will try to cover the maximum of it. the maximum important topic of the transmission line maximum uh, important and as well as in depth i will try to cover uh, the overview of each and every topic of the transmission line including the smith chart and the s parameter okay so i will cover these two topic also s parameter and smith chart we will be covering today so you should know that uh, we are starting a very interesting and uh, very important series for all of you that is master msq series so you are worried about the msqs because the last year in the gate examination there are multiple questions uh, many questions from the msq so you might be worrying about which kind of question can be asked in this msq series so for every subject we are bringing msq series and it it will be also like a marathon it may take uh, Ah, uh, two and three hours approximately, and every day you will learn the MSQ questions, how to attempt and uh, solve for each branch. Okay, so and we have the mega mock test also for the GATE 2023 students. So 10 January to 16 January, ah, uh, you can register yourself for the mega mock test, and uh, the link is given in the description. So you just go in the uh, description and check your, whether. Uh, you have registered yourself or not so this is the first topic yes piyush good evening so first topic uh, in the transmission line actually the transmission line is basically a uh, two line conductors we can say whenever we have the two parallel conductors or you can say the two conductors and they are separated by some distance and they have the opposite and uh, equal current in each conductor in the opposite direction then uh, it forms it can be worked as a transmission line like you can see the as an example we have the coaxial cable so coaxial cable also have the inner conductor outer conductor we connect the uh, signal source between them then the wave transmits the voltage wave the current wave transmits along the length of the transmission line so uh if we want to generalize the transmission line then we can say that this transmission line is a two wire system two conductor system between which we can connect the source so usually for our convenience we represent the transmission line with the two wire that is the first conductor and another is the second conductor so we have this two conductor this is the first conductor okay this is the first conductor and this is the second conductor so this two conductor system can be formed as a transmission line 
हेलो सुरजीत आई एम गुड आई होप दैट यू आर आल्सो वर्किंग वेल इन द बार्क सेकेंड ईयर स्टूडेंट फॉर द डबल ई दिस इज नॉट इन द सिलेबस सो तरुण इफ यू आर फ्रॉम डबल ई एंड ऑल्सो इन द सेकेंड ईयर देन दिस इज नॉट फॉर यू बिकॉज दिस इज एक्सक्लूसिवली फॉर द ई सी स्टूडेंट ओके and uh, when will the communication marathon will go a uh, communication marathon will be tomorrow at 10 am okay at 10 am we will start the communication system and it will go around uh, uh, in the evening 6 o'clock so this is the two conductor system and uh, the conductor is represented by equivalent parameters they are resistance and the inductance and uh, shunt resistance you can say the conductance and the capacitance so r l g c these are the four parameters by which we approximate the transmission line okay so after this we can say that this r l g c all are the distributed you know it was distributed parameters so that is why we define it to uh, apply the network theory we define it as a per unit length so r l g c are the resistance inductance conductance and capacitance per unit length so these are not discrete and they are distributed and important thing is that this g that is conductance is not equal to 1 upon r because this g represents the dielectric loss and the r represents the conduction loss so both are different the dielectric is which is filled between the two trans two conductors between the transmission line and in the conductor itself if there is a loss to represent that loss we use the resistance r so r and g both are defining the different parameters and they are defined in the different medium so that is why they are not inverse r is not equal to 1 upon g now the transmission line equation if you apply this is the generator part and this is the load part and uh, we divide the transmission line into small small element so this is vzt this is izt which is the voltage and the current at the source end and r and l because we want to apply the network theory because we want to define the transmission line equation because of that we are multiplying it with the length of the transmission line what is the length of the transmission line the length we are considering is very very small that is delta z so this is z and this is z plus delta z so this to analyze the transmission line completely we divide the transmission line into a small small element that is known as unit element and that unit element has the length delta z so when the parameters are defined in terms of uh, per unit length then we cannot apply the direct network theory but if we want to apply the network theory or the kcl and kvl we want a lump parameter and to calculate the lump parameter means exact value of the resistance when we have multiplied it with the length of the transmission line so this is delta z l into delta z and similarly g into delta z and c into delta z okay so when we multiply uh, when we apply the uh, kvl and kcl okay so what we will get so let's apply the kvl in the outer loop okay so when we apply the kvl in the outer loop what we will get so we will get this v z comma t minus i z comma t multiplied with r into delta z and minus j omega l into delta z and i of z comma t okay so here you can see that this is l into delta z so we will get the uh, d l di by dt so this is the d upon dt i have written as j omega and then we have got v z that is again minus v z plus delta z comma t equal to 0 okay so v z comma t minus v z plus delta z comma t and whole divided by delta z is nothing but i z comma t and can be written as r plus j omega l 
okay so when we apply the limit both the side limit z tends to zero that because this is the unit element now and we want the smallest length of the transmission line so let us say the delta z is zero then this is v z comma t minus v z plus delta z comma t divided by delta z is equal to i and here also we have to apply the limit so limit delta z tends to zero and this is i z comma t and r plus j omega l so this is nothing but a minus of del minus of del v upon del z equal to i z comma t or you can simply write i i of z and v of z i am not writing the time function so v of z and i of z and then r plus j omega l okay so put it equation number one is it clear is this lines are clear to you all of you just comment once is it clear this this equations yes okay piyush shraddha sujit sonali those who are watching quickly comment once is it okay yes so now let's apply the nodal analysis at this point okay this n we are applying now nodal kcl at the node n then what we will get then we will get yes so now we will get i z comma t we will get i z comma t that is incoming current and outgoing current i am taking uh, incoming current as negative and outgoing current as positive so outgoing current is i z plus delta z comma t okay and uh, this is also positive so voltage is v z plus delta z comma t and uh, because it is conducting so this is g into delta z and uh, because uh, that is the capacitor and both are connected in shunt so that will be your j omega c and here also we have v z plus delta z into so comma t z plus delta z comma t into delta z equal to zero so now when we write it that limit delta z tends to zero this can be written as i z plus delta z comma t minus i of z comma t whole divided by delta z equal to this is i am taking in the right hand side so this is minus v and also let's take limit limit delta z tends to zero so this is v z plus delta z comma t and g this common so this is g plus j omega c okay and it is minus sign also minus sign also okay so when you apply the z tends to zero limit delta z tends to zero so the left hand side will become del i of z comma t i am not taking with just the function of time so this is delta z is equal to this delta z tends to zero so this will also become minus of v of z and this is g plus j omega c put it equation number two okay now because we want to derive the equation of voltage and the current so let's differentiate this equation with respect to z again so minus del square v 
z upon del z square is equal to del i z upon del z and in bracket we will get r plus j omega l right so here del i upon del z we are getting in this equation so what is the value of del i upon del z so del i upon del z we have calculated here so now substitute this minus del square v z comma del z square is equal to uh, del i upon del z is minus of v of z and then g plus j omega c and here we have r plus j omega l so this minus sign and minus sign will get cancelled and we will get del square v z upon del z square is equal to r plus j omega l and g plus j omega c into v of z okay now when you uh, take this r plus j omega and g plus j omega c so we will call it as gamma square so here you can see that what equation we are getting okay so after solving that we are getting del square v s okay v s we can take or simply v as we have taken so del square v s upon del z is equal to gamma square v s here s is representing that we are not taking the time factor because I have neglected time factor, no. So this is nothing but a suppressing the time factor. Okay, we are representing, uh, we are not taking that time factor. That is S we are ignoring. So this S I am ignoring. So suppressing the time factor. So this S is, these two equations we will get. Yes, hello everyone. So these two equations we will get del square I S upon del z square is equal to gamma I square i s so this is the helmholtz equation and gamma is nothing but a propagation constant which is root over r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c so this is nothing but alpha plus j beta right alpha plus j beta gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta where alpha is known as attenuation constant alpha is Okay, alpha is attenuation constant and beta is phase constant. Okay, so what is the unit of alpha? That is Napier per meter. And what is the unit of beta? That is radian per meter. Right? Is it clear? Now, after this, when we calculate the solution okay when we calculate the solution we get this relation vs as a function of z because we have neglected the time factor we will get vs is equal to v naught plus e to the power minus gamma z plus v naught minus it should be minus v naught minus e to the power plus gamma z and similarly for current for current we will get is as a function of z i naught plus and e to the power minus gamma z and i naught minus e to the power plus gamma z so this term gives you the forward traveling wave and this term gives you reverse traveling wave right so this is the forward traveling wave forward traveling voltage wave okay forward traveling voltage wave and this is the reverse traveling or the backward traveling voltage wave right Similarly, this is forward and this is backward, right? Is it clear up to this point? So now, uh, we will define the characteristic impedance. So it is nothing but a ratio of positively traveling voltage wave to the positively traveling current wave at any point in the transmission line. So Z0, which is the characteristic impedance, is we are traveling the positively traveling voltage wave or positive traveling current wave. So what is the positive traveling voltage wave? This is V naught plus e to the power minus gamma z and I naught plus e to the power minus gamma z. Okay, so this will cancel. So V naught plus divided by I naught plus and it can also be written as minus of V naught minus divided by I naught minus. So it can be the ratio of the reverse traveling voltage wave to the reverse traveling current wave. 
but this minus sign tells us that the wave is traveling in the negative direction. So, this is the characteristic impedance. What is the lossless line? How do you define the lossless line? Can anybody tell? How do we define the lossless line? So, characteristic impedance is also defined as in terms of primary constant. R, L, G, C are primary constant. So, these are R plus J omega L and this is G plus J omega C. Yes, so when we talk about the lossless line, the losses should be 0. So, R is 0 and G is also 0 because I told you that R represents the ohmic loss and G represents the dielectric loss. So, we do not want any losses. Lossless means we do not want any loss. That means the loss are R and G. So, they should be 0. So, characteristic impedance is real. That is also okay, but you cannot define the lossless line as a characteristic impedance. So, lossless lines are R equal to 0, G equal to 0. So, for this you will get alpha equal to 0. Okay, alpha equal to 0 and beta is equal to omega root LC. So, how we are deriving this? I hope that you are able to understand. Okay, we are actually deriving it from gamma is equal to alpha plus J beta which was root over R plus J omega L and G plus J omega C. So, when you substitute R and G 0, and when you compare with the left hand side, you will get alpha equal to 0 and beta is equal to omega root LC. Okay. Then, after this, after this, we have the characteristic impedance also. So, the characteristic impedance is L upon C. This is the characteristic imp impedance. And what about the intrinsic impedance? Okay, there is no intrinsic impedance, no. One more thing is there, which is velocity. Which is velocity. What should be the velocity? What should be the velocity? V velocity is defined as omega by beta and that can be written as 1 upon root over LC. Okay. So, these are the four parameters that we have to know about the lossless line omega by beta. Right. So, is it clear? Lossless line, is this clear? So, next is distortionless line. How do you define the distortionless line? So, a line is said to be distortionless if R by L is equal to G upon C. A line is said to be distortionless if R by L is equal to G by C. So, what are the different parameters for this? We calculate the value of alpha. So, the value of alpha is the root over Rg. Okay, the value of alpha is root over Rg. The value of beta is omega root LC, there is no change in the value of beta. The value of characteristic impedance is root over L by C and the value of VP is 1 upon root LC. And this 1 upon root, uh, root over L by C can also be written as root over R by G. Isn't it? So, these are the four values we get. These are the four values we get. Clear? For the distortionless line, we can say that this is the real characteristic impedance. So, characteristic impedance is real. So, Z0 is always real in case of distortionless line. Yes. Now, the distortionless line is one whose attenuation constant is independent of frequency because alpha is equal to root over Rg. So, it is independent of frequency and on the other end, the phase constant is omega root LC. So, that is the linear function of frequency. 
what is the solution of this question forget about low loss okay so can you solve this question What is the solution of this question? Come on, tell me. So here you can see that there is a lossy transmission line given but alpha and j beta we can calculate from here but the characteristic impedance which is given here is real. So when the characteristic impedance is real and there is a alpha not equal to 0 okay when the characteristic impedance is real and alpha not equal to 0 we can conclude that this is nothing but a distortion less line okay why we are calling it as a distortion less understood because the alpha is not equal to 0 alpha is not equal to 0 and the characteristic impedance is real okay so characteristic impedance real with alpha not equal to 0 is the distortion less line and alpha equal to 0 is always a lossless line yes so now let us solve this question. So, we have got the alpha is equal to 2 and beta is equal to 5 and the characteristic impedance is 50 and omega is equal to 10 to the power 6. So, characteristic impedance is 50 and omega is equal to 10 to the power 6. Now, we know that Rg alpha is equal to root over Rg and we also know that the characteristic impedance is root over R by G. So, if I multiply these two equations alpha into Z naught, I will get R. So, the R is 2 into 50 alpha into Z naught. So, here we get the alpha uh, R is equal to 100. So, this is the first solution. Now, we also know that beta is equal to omega root LC and the characteristic impedance is root over L by C. So, if I multiply beta into Z naught, I will get omega into L. So, from here we can calculate the value of L which is beta into Z naught divided by omega. So, L is equal to beta is 5, Z naught is 50 and omega is 10 to the power 6. So, from here we will get 250 micro Henry and all these are per meter na? per unit length. So, per meter ohms per meter right. So, 100 and 250 R and L. L is 250 in the first option and this is the right answer option B. Option B you can see that this L is 250 and R is 100. So, these two value we have calculated and we can conclude the answer. Okay. So, once you calculate these two value you can conclude the answer. Uh, you can conclude the value of G also by dividing this okay if you want to calculate the value of g then you can calculate alpha upon z naught this will be root over r g divided by root over r by g so this is nothing but a g which is alpha upon z naught so alpha is 2 z naught is 50 so from here you can calculate the value of uh, 0 0.004 0 0.04 and more per meter or Siemens per meter. So, you can see uh, option B, the G is 0 0.04. Similarly, by dividing the beta and Z naught, you can calculate the value of 
C also. Correct? Now, the next question is, can you tell me the answer of this question quickly? A lossy transmission line has the resistance per unit length R is equal to 0 0.05. The line is distortionless and has the characteristic impedance 50, so attenuation constant. Can you tell me the answer of this question quickly? Correct up to 3 decimals. Come on guys, quickly. So, as you can see that again we have R which is 0 0.05 and this is distortion less. So, this is root over, sorry, uh, this is value of R, na? okay. So, this is the value of R, right. And uh, we have the characteristic impedance also 50. So, we know that this alpha is equal to root over Rg. And this Z0 is equal to root over R by G. So, again when we multiply this alpha into Z0, okay, we have to multiply it again. So, alpha into Z0 is R. So, we want to calculate the alpha. Alpha is equal to R upon Z0. R is 0 0.05 and Z0 is 50. So, from here you can tell the value of alpha which is 0 0.001. Okay, so the answer is 0.001, correct up to 3 decimals because if you take the 2 decimals then it answer will be 00. So, that is why it is asking for the up to 2 decimals. So, 0.001. Okay, so Nali, so I hope that you have understood what is your mistake. Okay, next is input impedance. So, the input impedance of the transmission line, suppose this is the transmission line. Okay, this is the transmission line. Right, this is the transmission line and in the transmission line when we look from the input side, this is our input side, what will be the overall input impedance of the transmission line. So, input impedance of the transmission line when the generator is Vg and the Im generator impedance is Zg and the load impedance is Zl and the load voltage is Vl and the current flowing through this is Il. Okay, And here the initial current is suppose I0. Then when we calculate the input impedance, then we can represent it by the equivalent circuit that is Vg into Zg. Here you can see this is the Vg into the Zg and this V0 uh, along with the Z in which is the input impedance. So, once we calculate the input impedance, the advantage is that we can calculate the initial voltage which is Z in upon by applying the voltage division rule which is the Z in into Vg divided by Z in plus Z G and similarly I naught is equal to V G upon Z in plus Z G. Yeah. So, the input impedance if we want to calculate the input impedance we do not want to derive it. The input impedance we calculate after calculating this overall input impedance for the lossless transmission line is Z naught in bracket. Okay. Z naught in bracket Z L plus J Z naught 10 beta L whole divided by Z naught plus J Z L 10 beta L. Okay, this is the transmission line input impedance. When you calculate the input impedance, 
of the transmission line you will get this for the lossless transmission line important it is that it is only for the lossless transmission line so what is the beta l what is the beta l beta l is known as electrical length okay beta l is known as electrical length so and its unit is in radian electrical length and its unit is in radian okay so our aim is to calculate the input impedance at the different length so what is the input impedance at the different length that means what do you understand by this so when you change the length what will be the input impedance suppose the first case if i take if i suppose take the length as lambda by 8 okay suppose i take the length of the transmission line as lambda by 8 then what is the value of beta l so beta l beta is given by 2 pi by lambda okay and into length length we have taken as lambda by 8 so this is equal to pi by 4 okay this is equal to pi by 4 so how do you calculate the input impedance the input impedance as the formula z naught in bracket load impedance zl plus j into z naught characteristic impedance and 10 beta l so 10 beta l beta l is pi by 4 whole divided by uh, z naught plus j zl and again 10 pi by 4 okay so when 10 pi by 4 is 1 so this is z naught in bracket zl plus j z naught divided by z naught plus j z l okay so what is the magnitude of input impedance the magnitude of input impedance is z naught which is characteristic impedance so that is the importance of this particular length that is if you calculate the magnitude of input impedance for the lambda by 8 length transmission line you will get the characteristic impedance only okay now suppose the case 2 if i take okay suppose i take the case number 2 if i take the case number 2 when the length of the transmission line is lambda by 4 so lambda by 4 that means beta l will be okay so this is 2 pi by lambda into lambda by 4 so we will get pi by 2 so for pi by 2 when we calculate the input impedance this is z naught and zl plus j z naught 10 beta l right so that is 10 pi by 2 and uh, this will be z naught plus j zl 10 pi by 2 okay so obviously we have to take this 10 pi by 2 common and it will become zl upon 10 pi by 2 plus j z naught and whole divided by z naught divided by 10 pi by 2 plus j z l so 10 pi by 2 is infinite so 1 upon infinity is 0 so input impedance will become this j uh, z naught square j and j cancel so z naught square upon z l so that is nothing but your input impedance which is z naught square upon z l so when the length of the transmission line is lambda by 4 what is the special name for this type of transmission line what is the special name for this type of transmission line if the length of the transmission line is lambda by 4 then what is the name of this type of transmission line yes quarter wave transmission line okay so we call it as a quarter wave transformer 
okay so in the exam sometimes it they will give you like this quarter wave transformer so quarter wave transformer means length of the transmission line is lambda by 4 okay this is also used for impedance matching okay so this is used for impedance matching and this is also known as impedance inversion device next input impedance at the different load we are calculating so case number 3 if the length of the transmission line is lambda by 2 okay that is beta l will be equal to 2 pi by lambda into lambda by 2 we will get pi so input impedance is z naught in bracket zl plus j z naught 10 beta l that means 10 pi divided by j z l 10 pi so 10 pi means 0 so we will get z l so here you can see that if the length of the transmission line is equal to lambda by 2 if the length of the transmission line is equal to lambda by 2 then input impedance is equal to the load impedance input impedance is equal to the load impedance right that means whatever will be at the load that will appear as the input impedance now uh, here we have the uh, input impedance for the different load okay so input impedance for the different load here we have the case number one load is different that means the load is short circuited when the load is short circuited when the load is short circuited what will be the input impedance so input impedance the formula is z naught and zl plus j z naught 10 beta l divided by z naught plus j z l 10 beta l so if the load is short circuited what will be the input impedance that will be known as z s c and this is nothing but a j z naught 10 beta l okay so z s c is j z naught 10 beta j z naught 10 beta right and if i take the case number 2 here case number 2 when the load is open circuited okay the load is open circuited then input impedance is z naught here i will take 1 plus j z naught upon z l and 10 beta l divided by 1 uh, sorry z l i have to take common z naught upon z l plus j 10 beta l then because the it is open circuited so it will be infinity so here the input impedance will be minus j z naught cot beta l so that will be your open circuit impedance or you can say the input impedance when the load is open circuit input impedance when the load is open circuit that is also called z o c right we can also write it as z o c got it now if we multiply these two equation suppose this is equation number one and this is equation number two and if you multiply these two equations so z s c into z o c is equal to characteristic impedance square so that is nothing but a geometric mean of z s c and z o c <clears throat> now coming to the reflection coefficient so how do you define the reflection coefficient 
the ratio of the reflected wave either it is voltage wave or current wave ratio of reflected voltage wave to the current wave is known as uh, reflect reflection coefficient is the ratio of the reflected voltage wave to the incident voltage wave or that is the forward voltage wave so suppose the volt wave is traveling in this side that is your forward traveling wave so forward wave and uh, here it is suppose wave is reflecting so this is a reflected wave so the ratio of reflected wave to the forward wave is known as reflection coefficient so at the load side if you want to calculate this is the equation that is the solution of the voltage and the current in this particular circuit yes so that is the solution of the uh, transmission line equation v naught plus e to the power minus gamma z plus v naught minus e to the power plus gamma z and for the current v naught plus divided by z naught e to the power minus gamma z minus of v naught minus divided by z naught e to the power plus gamma z so if i want to calculate the reflection coefficient then at the load side so at z is equal to l at the load side i am calculating so v at z is equal to l is v naught plus e to the power minus gamma l plus v naught minus e to the power plus gamma l right so here if i want to define the reflected voltage wave okay suppose here i want to define the reflected voltage wave at reflected voltage wave or simply i should say actually reflection coefficient reflection coefficient reflection coefficient for voltage wave okay so that is nothing but a gamma and v i am using in the subscript that is representing the reflection coefficient for the voltage wave is reflected wave which is v naught e to the power gamma l and divided by incident wave v naught plus e to the power minus gamma l so it is nothing but a v naught minus divided by v naught plus e to the power 2 gamma l so that is the reflection coefficient for voltage wave at load so that is nothing but a load at load reflection coefficient is given by v naught minus divided by v naught plus e to the power 2 gamma l or you can also write zl minus z naught divided by sorry okay so this is the reflection coefficient at load okay this is the reflection coefficient hello good evening yes uh, this is the reflection coefficient at load okay for the voltage wave similarly for the current wave what is the reflection coefficient can anybody tell reflection coefficient for the current wave reflection coefficient for current wave gamma i is nothing but a minus of gamma v that is equal to minus of zl minus z naught divided by zl plus z naught Okay, reflection coefficient for current wave is minus of reflection coefficient for voltage wave. Got it? Got it or not? Is it clear up to this point? Now, if suppose you want to calculate the reflection coefficient at any distance L dash. Okay, suppose you want to calculate the reflection coefficient at any distance L dash. So, reflection coefficient. reflection coefficient at any distance l dash from the load okay so that is gamma 
at any distance l dash is nothing but a gamma at load is equal to e to the power minus j 2 beta l dash for lossless line for lossless transmission line. Okay, suppose you want to calculate the uh, impedance at any distance L dash, reflection coefficient at any distance L dash. For example, let me draw this diagram. This is suppose load and this is the transmission line. Okay, so this is the transmission line and the load is connected over here. Suppose this is the load ZL and its value is 100 ohm the characteristic impedance is 50 ohm and the length of the transmission line here the length of the transmission line this is the length of the transmission line this is the length of the transmission line the length of the transmission line is lambda by 4 i want to calculate the reflection coefficient at this point can you tell me what is the reflection coefficient Gamma will we have to calculate obviously Ravi gamma we will always have to calculate. So what is the value of reflection coefficient? What is the value of reflection coefficient here? So the answer is different, different. It is coming one by three. Heman Krishna is saying. So suppose I want to calculate the reflection coefficient. So gamma load is ZL minus Z naught divided by ZL plus Z naught. So it is 100 minus 50 and uh, 100 plus 50. So it is one upon three. But this one upon three is at load. As I told you that if you want to calculate the gamma at load. The formula is this, but I told you also that if you want to calculate the reflection coefficient at any distance L dash, then it is nothing but a reflection coefficient at load and e to the power minus j 2 beta L dash. So that is nothing but a 1 upon 3 and e to the power minus j 2 into beta which is 2 pi by lambda and lambda by 4. So when you will solve it, you will get 1 upon 3 e to the power minus j pi by 2. Uh, yeah, minus j pi in fact minus j pi so cos pi will be minus 1 so this is minus 1 by 3 we will get so the answer is minus 1 by 3 not the plus 1 by 3 yes Tushar hello Tushar how are you I think uh, we have met before Okay, so the answer will be minus 0 0.33, not the plus 1 by 3. Okay, so Heman, you should see, okay, you should see that uh, where you have to calculate the reflection coefficient, whether you want to calculate at the load end or you want to calculate at any distance. Here, I have given you the question, the reflection coefficient, we want to calculate at the input side of the transmission line, not at the load. So, at the load, if you want to calculate, this formula is valid. But because we want to calculate at any distance lambda by 4, so that is why this formula will be applied. Okay, that formula we have already written over here. Okay. Okay, now standing wave ratio. How do you define the standing wave ratio? So, a standing wave ratio again for the voltage wave is given by the maximum value of voltage divided by maximum value of uh, minimum value of voltage maximum to minimum and mod of it okay 
Yeah. So this can be written as reflection. Uh, okay, sorry. I have written the standing wave ratio. Standing wave ratio. This is for voltage. So this is VSWR. So VSWR is V max divided by V min and mod. That is nothing but a one plus magnitude of voltage reflection coefficient divided by one minus magnitude of voltage reflection coefficient. Okay, this is the formula. And from here we can also calculate the magnitude of reflection coefficient as. VSWR minus 1 divided by VSWR plus 1. Okay. Because we are going to take mod, so that is why the current standing wave ratio is also same. So magnitude of uh, I max and I mean ratio of magnitude of this. So when we take the magnitude, this is 1 plus magnitude of current reflection coefficient divided by 1 minus magnitude of current reflection coefficient and because we are taking the mod this can also be written as okay this can also current reflection coefficient can be written as current reflection coefficient is minus of voltage reflection coefficient so this is 1 plus mod of minus gamma v and 1 minus mod of minus gamma v okay so that can be written as 1 plus mod gamma v divided by 1 minus mod gamma v so this is nothing but a voltage standing wave ratio so what do you understand by this that the current standing wave ratio is equal to voltage standing wave ratio for the lossless line this all we are calculating for the lossless line for lossless line I am not talking about the lossy transmission line, okay. For lossless transmission line, the current standing wave ratio or the voltage standing wave ratio are same throughout the transmission line. At any point of the transmission line, if you calculate, you will get the same standing wave ratio for the voltage and the current. It does not depend on the distance at which you are calculating. Suppose the reflection coefficient here you are calculating, okay. So the reflection coefficient at the load and at, at the input side, both are different. But if I calculate the standing wave ratio here, so standing wave ratio is 1 plus mod gamma. Okay, so 1 plus 1 by 3 divided by 1 minus 1 by 3. So this is your 2. Okay, so this is the voltage standing wave ratio 2. And here also if I calculate the voltage standing wave ratio, and this time reflection coefficient is minus 1 by 3. And because we are going to take mod only, so this is 1 by uh, sorry 2 only the voltage standing wave ratio is 2 all here also the voltage standing wave ratio is 2 okay at the input side also it is 2 because we in the formula we are calculating mod of reflection coefficient we are writing mod of reflection coefficient right what is the location of maxima and minima the location of maxima where the voltage standing wave ratio will have the maximum voltage. Okay. What is that? This is phi plus 2 beta L dash. This is phi plus 2n pi divided by beta l. Okay. And the location of minima is location of maxima plus minus lambda by 4. The location between the two successive maxima. The location between the two successive maxima. So, Distance, let's write distance. Maybe I have written over here. So, distance between distance between two successive maxima, distance between two successive maxima is lambda by maxima or minima, maxima or
minima is lambda by 2 and distance between maxima and minima is lambda by 4. Okay, now coming to the impedance matching. Coming to the impedance matching. So, tell me what is the impedance matching? Tell me what do you mean by the impedance matching and when we use when we use for yes to match the output and input suppose we have this type of line okay suppose we have the this type of line okay suppose we have this type of line there is a mismatch means this is the zl which is not equal to characteristic impedance and this is z0 this is the lossless line because the ZL is not equal to 0, the reflection coefficient is not equal to 0 here. So, what do you mean by impedance matching? Impedance matching is the load impedance should be equal to characteristic impedance. Okay. What do you mean by the impedance matching? If the impedance matching is done, then the reflection coefficient is 0. Okay. Impedance matching means you can say that the reflection coefficient has to be 0. So, reflection coefficient has to be 0. That means here we want the reflection coefficient to be 0. So, for the reflection coefficient to be 0, what we are doing is we are keeping the lambda by 4 length transmission line. We are keeping the lambda by 4 length transmission line just prior to just prior to load. Okay, just prior to load where ZL is not equal to Z0. Now we are keeping the lambda by 4 length transmission line whose characteristic impedance is Z0 dash and this is our main line which was lossless and having the characteristic impedance Z0. Okay. So what we have done? We have configured it in such a way that we are having one transmission line which is our main transmission line and this is the load which was our main load that is ZL. But before this, before this, we have substituted one transmission line of length lambda by 4. Okay, so this transmission line is having the length lambda by 4 whose characteristic impedance is Z0. Then to match 
here the reflection coefficient has to be zero here for the reflection coefficient to be zero at the input the characteristic impedance of the lambda by 4 length transmission line is geometric mean of z0 and the zl means the two impedance which you want to match the two impedances which you want to match you have to take the geometric mean of those two impedance which you want to match to calculate the characteristic impedance of the line is it okay Okay, so whenever we keep the lambda by 4 length transmission line in between the lossless and the load, the input impedance uh, input will have the reflection coefficient 0. So, the 0 reflection coefficient you can achieve by taking the uh, geometric mean of the impedance to be matched and put the lambda by 4 length transmission line in between them, you will get the answer. So, what is the answer of this question? Stub matching. Stub matching actually uh, it is not necessary for us because in the gate syllabus we have the impedance matching uh, and uh, we use the stub matching for this but actually there is a theoretical question only so that is why we do not uh, keep here in the discussion because uh, that is not that important as per the gate exam point of view. So, a lossless transmission line is terminated in a load which reflects a part of the incident power. Then what VSWR is 2, then what is the power that is reflected back? So, percentage power that is reflected back is mod gamma square into 100. So, what is the gamma? This is ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL plus Z0. So, here it is uh, VSWR is 2. So, this is S minus 1 upon S plus 1 which is your gamma mod gamma in fact. So, mod gamma will be 1 upon 3. So, this is 1 upon 9 into 100. So, this is your 11.11. 11.11 will be the right answer. Okay, we want to calculate in percentage. So, 11.11 will be the right answer. Next, The return loss of a device is found to be 20 dB, then the voltage standing wave ratio and the magnitude of the reflection coefficient are respectively. So, return loss is defined as minus 20 log of mod gamma. So, this is 20 is equal to minus 20 log of mod gamma. So, here it is mod gamma is equal to 10 to the power minus 1. So, that is 0 0.1. Okay. And uh, we want to calculate the standing wave ratio also. So, the standing wave ratio is 1 plus mod gamma divided by 1 minus mod gamma. So, this is 1.1 divided by 0 0.9. So, it is 1.22. So, answer is option A. Okay, so those who don't know about this formula return loss, the return loss is minus 20 log of magnitude of reflection coefficient.
Yes. Now answer this question. Yes, so we know that. Yes, absolutely correct. So we know that the characteristic impedance is geometric mean of the short circuit impedance and the open circuit impedance. So this is root over 25 into 100. So we get 50 ohms. So answer is option B. Next. Answer this question. Yes. Okay, so no one is able to solve this question right now. Okay, let's solve more questions. Maybe after that you will get an idea. So let's take this one. Consider a 3 meter long lossless uh, air filled transmission line shown in figure. It has a characteristic impedance 120 pi and it is terminated by a short circuit. Then what is the nature of input impedance? So the load is short circuit. So you know that what you have to do is z input you want to calculate this is j z naught 10 beta l okay because the load is short circuited so this is z s c you have to tell the nature of this impedance so what you have to do is this is j into 120 pi and 10 into beta l or omega by vp so this is 2 pi into f f is 37.5 into 10 to power 6 divided by vp velocity of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 into length length is 3 so after solving this whatever you get according to that you can tell what will be your nature because if it is positive if the answer is positive then it is inductive okay if it is positive then it is inductive if it is positive then it is inductive and if it is negative then it is capacitive Okay, so it may be inductive or capacitive depends on what value you are getting. Now let's uh, come to the next uh, 
yeah this question maybe this question will help you to solve the previous question let's see uh, this is the standing wave ratio it is given to you so once you solve this question you may be able to solve the previous question that we left so this is the v max and the v min and this is the load end and uh, the characteristic impedance of the line is 50 ohm the resistive load is given okay the the load is resistive in nature can you answer this question you have to tell the load resistance okay your question is what is the value of load resistance your question is you want to calculate the load resistance What will be the value of load resistance? Two hundred ohm. You are getting. See, uh, let's see whether there is an option or not. Two hundred. You are getting. Okay. So, see, Tushar, uh, because you can see that in this particular standing wave ratio uh, diagram, standing wave pattern, the look at the load we are having the at the load we are having the voltage minima. So, very important point to note down here at load voltage minima is occurring okay at volt at load voltage minima occurs okay okay so at load voltage minima occurs so when the load at load voltage minima occurs then what happens when the load voltage minima occurs then the zl is less than z naught so when the ZL is less than Z0, the standing wave ratio is calculated as Z0 upon ZL. Okay, so we want to calculate the ZL. So this will be Z0 upon S. And what is the value of S? S is Vmax upon Vmin. <coughs> so uh, Vmax is 4 and Vmin is 1 and Z0 is 50. So ZL is equal to 12.5 so load impedance will be 12.5 answer will be option c okay yeah so the simple thing which may be missed or which may not be seen in the diagram now what is the reflection coefficient because we have calculated the standing wave ratio so mod of uh, reflection coefficient is s minus 1 divided by s plus 1 and this is 4 minus 1 divided by 4 plus 1. So it is nothing but a 3 upon 5. So what will be the reflection coefficient? What will be the reflection coefficient? What will be the reflection coefficient? Okay, so here you can see that 
we are just calculating the magnitude this will give us the magnitude only okay this will give us the magnitude only okay right this will give us the magnitude only but we know that uh, because voltage minima was occurred the zl is less than z0 because the voltage minima was occurred zl is less than z0 and actual formula for the reflection coefficient is zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0 so if the zl is less than z0 then the reflection coefficient has to be negative and from the above calculation we have calculated the positive value so obviously the reflection coefficient should be negative because zl is less than z0 so the answer is not 3 by 5 because it is just the magnitude the sign can be calculated from the fact that zl is less than z0 so the answer will be option a okay so the answer will be option a yes absolutely fine so let's solve this question ZL is 100, na? the load is 100, if you are not able to see ZL is 100. So what is the characteristic impedance of the line? The characteristic impedance of the lambda by 4 transmission line is the geometric mean of the impedance to be matched. So we want to match the input impedance and this load impedance. So that is 50 into 100, which is I think 70 point. Okay, because this is the input impedance, so this input impedance Z in is given and it should be matched with the characteristic impedance to have the reflection coefficient 0 at the input. If you want to take the reflection coefficient 0 at the input, then this input impedance has to be equal to the characteristic impedance. So our formula, actual formula was root over characteristic impedance and load impedance so this characteristic impedance is replaced by input impedance because in the question input impedance was given and this input impedance has to be matched with the characteristic impedance to have the reflection coefficient zero at the input so uh, this is the mega workshop going uh, to start by the abhinav negi sir in the 15th of january that is on sunday uh, it is sunday right yes sunday at 12 30 pm for the gate 2024 students so if you are a uh, gate 24 student or if you know anyone who is preparing for the gate 24 then you can just uh, uh, refer this particular workshop to him or her uh, so that he can also ace the gate 24 and the general aptitude session is going to be taken by the rakesh sir and the, in the 15 marks, in just 15 hours, you will be getting all the 15 marks. So that is very, very important session for all of you, general aptitude. Okay. And for maths, also there is a one session in the two day, that is Mahamarathan. Okay. Now coming to the next topic, which is Smith chart. So Smith chart basically a two circles. It is a family of two circles. Right, it is a family of two circle in which we have the constant resistance circle and the constant reactance circle. This is the first point. So in the Smith chart, we have the two type of circle. And the second point is constant resistance circle and the constant reactance circles are orthogonal to each other. That means they are tangent on orthogonal. And the third one is these, there are three scales in the outermost circle of the Smith chart, phase angle and the 
distance in terms of wavelength when you move towards generator distance in terms of wavelength when you move towards load so there are three type of scale in the outermost of the smith chart okay you can directly measure the phase you can calculate the distance in terms of wavelength that how far you have traveled in the transmission line when you move towards load or you move towards generator in both side you can calculate the distance in terms of wavelength so the equation of the constant resistance circle is gamma real minus r upon r plus 1 whole square plus gamma imaginary square is equal to 1 upon r plus 1 whole square so here the center is uh, r upon r plus 1 comma 0 and the radius is 1 upon r plus 1 so by varying the value of r by varying the value of r that is we can calculate the center and we can also calculate the radius and we can draw the circles okay so let's take r equal to 0 if i take r equal to 0 then the center will be 0 0 and the radius will be 1 that means it will give us r equal to 0 will give us unit circle okay so r equal to 0 will give us unit circle then now r is equal to let's take 1 so if i take r is equal to 1 the radius will be 0 0.5 comma 0 and uh, sorry center will be 0 0.5 comma 0 and the radius is 0 0.5 if i take r is equal to infinity then this will be 1 comma 0 the center will be 1 comma 0 and the radius will be 0 okay so when i draw this we get this type of circle here you can see that r is equal to 0 is giving you the unit circle and this is the boundary of the smith chart so this is the unit circle as you start increasing the value of r the radius uh, the circle is converging towards the point this is the point where the radius is 0 and the center is 1 comma 0 so here you can see that this radius this circle is converging towards this point the unit circle is converging towards the point at r equal to infinity so at r equal to 0 we started and as you start increasing the value of r this is r equal to 0 0.5 this is r equal to 1 then 2 then 5 then infinity this is converging towards the origin so if there is one more thing that you can notice here is uh, for the r greater than equal to 1 the circles are lying in the first and the fourth quadrant of this okay only lying in the first and fourth quadrant so that is one point that you can notice about this particular reactance uh, resistance circle okay that first of all r equal to 0 will give you the unit circle second thing when r is greater than uh, 1 the circle will lie in the first and the fourth uh, quadrant and when r is infinity then it is a point and all the circles are lying through the or all the circle will pass through the point 1 comma 0 that is the next point which you can notice now the constant reactance circle gamma real minus 1 whole square gamma imaginary minus 1 upon x whole square and the 1 upon x whole square so here also you can calculate the uh, centers here is 1 comma 1 upon x and the radius is 1 upon x right and this is the value of x this x can be negative or not can this x be negative because the x negative tells you that it is a capacitive so when we take x equal to 0 this is 1 comma infinite and this is also infinity when i take x equal to 1 it is 1 comma 1 and this is also 1 when I take x equal to minus 1, this is 1 comma minus 1, but the radius is always positive. So, it is 1 and similarly, you can take x equal to infinity also. This is also 1 comma 0 and then 0. So, here also at 1 comma 0, x is infinity. So, this is the point where x is infinity. Okay. Uh, 
an x positive tells you about the uh, uh, inductive load and uh, x negative will tell about the reactive load or capacitive load okay okay now this is the smith chart when we superimpose the constant resistance circle and the constant reactance circle we obtain the smith chart so this is how the smith chart will look like okay now can you answer this question can you answer this question Can you answer this question quickly? So the answer you are giving is B. So this point P, this point R, let's talk about this point R. Here the R was also infinity and the X was also infinity. So the R is open circuited and uh, this will tell you about the X0 and R0. So this point P is the short circuited and point Q is the point where the gamma is 0. That is the center point because the uh, Smith chart is nothing but a uh, reflection coefficient plot. So this is the origin. So that origin gives you gamma 0 and gamma 0 that means match load. Yes, so short circuit, match load and the open circuit. Yes, so correct answer is option C. Now let's discuss about the transient on the uh, transmission line. So this is the DC supply we gave to the transmission line. Uh, before previously we have uh, given the uh, sinusoidal wave but when we give the uh, step signal or the DC signal to the transmission line it shows the transient behavior. So at time t is equal to 0 when the switch is closed then it gives you the initial voltage equal to the characteristic impedance of the line. So this characteristic impedance of the line is R0 and the load impedance is ZL uh, or R RL and the length of the transmission line is L. So uh, at time t equal to 0 when the switch is closed it will give us the initial voltage V0 it will give us the initial voltage V0 across the resistance R0 okay so this will give us the initial voltage V0 and the initial current R0 here you can see in the diagram once okay so here you can see that uh, at time t is equal to 0 when the switch is closed uh, the equivalent diagram will be uh, Vg and Rg and then the input impedance instead of input impedance at t equal to 0 we will get the characteristic impedance of the line at the input side because it is just the time when the switch is closed. So we get the V0 so that V0 and the I0 is the initial voltage and current which is applied to the transmission line okay so that is applied to the transmission line. So here we will see that when you apply the, when you calculate the initial voltage, that initial voltage and the current is I0 is equal to V0 upon Zg plus Z0 and the voltage V0 is equal to Z0 up into Vg that divided by Zg plus Z0, it is nothing but the voltage division rule. So after the switch is closed, when you will close the switch at I equal to I0 and V equal to V0, propagate towards the load at the speed of velocity is equal to 1 upon root LC or simple you can calculate the velocity or the time time it will take to reach from the source end or the generator end to the load end 
is the distance upon velocity which is l upon u so that is the time that is known as the transient time since the the speed is finite it takes some time for the positive traveling wave to reach the load and interact with it so the presence of the load has no effect on the waves before the transit time which is t1 is equal to l upon u distance upon velocity what is the bounce diagram so in the bounce diagram we calculate the source voltage this is the source side voltage and this is the load and voltage so at at time t equal to 0 and distance 0 the initial voltage is v0 so that voltage v0 travels okay this v0 travels and it goes into the end of load so this is towards the load end and towards the load end it will be reflected by the load and it will be gamma l into v0 okay so what is the voltage over this point so this point the voltage will be v0 plus gamma l into v0 so this is the voltage at distance l and time t is equal to tr that is the transit time the voltage or the current wave will take the transit time to reach from the source to the load end so the voltage at the load end will be given as v0 plus gamma l into v0 at time tr and distance l so when it will come back to the source end it will be 0 comma 2 tr because it will take two way propagation it is a two way propagation so the time taken by the uh, wave to travel from the source end to load end and the load end to the source end that will be 2 tr so this voltage will be and it will reflect from this end it will reflect from the generator end so the generator reflection coefficient is gamma g so gamma g into gamma l into v0 so here the voltage will be v0 plus v0 into gamma l plus v0 into gamma l into gamma g right then again it will reflect from here and it will become gamma g and gamma l square into v0 again it will reflect from here and it will become gamma g square gamma l square into v0 and so on okay so this will be the bounce diagram for voltage wave similarly you can calculate the bounce diagram for the current wave only difference will be the initial current will be i0 and the reflection coefficient will be minus because it the current reflection coefficient is minus of voltage reflection coefficient so this is minus into gamma l into i0 then it will reflect from this source generator end so this will become plus gamma g into gamma l into v0 and then again it will be minus gamma g into gamma l square into v0 and then again it is plus gamma g square into gamma l square into v0 and uh, the current over here is i0 1 minus gamma l or like let's write like this only so tell me one whether it is clear or not that how i am writing this voltages and the current equation whether it is clear or not let me know first okay so here it is i naught minus gamma l into i naught this is for current wave yes this is for current wave the voltage bounce diagram and the current this is the current bounce diagram so current bounce diagram okay the initial current is i naught the initial current is i naught this is at the source end okay this is your source end so at the source end the current initial current was i naught then i naught will travel and it will take tr time to reach to the load end so it will reach to the load end after tr second then it will reflect from the load because the load is not equal to the characteristic impedance so it will reflect from the load and it will be minus gamma l into i naught okay because the reflection coefficient for the current wave is minus of reflection coefficient for voltage wave so that is why the minus sign will come and because here also at the generator end it will reflect so the reflection coefficient will be negative so negative negative will become positive and hence this is gamma g into gamma l into i naught oh sorry this is i naught
this is i not i not and i not okay now let's come to the next point which is the necessity of the s parameter why we use the s parameter if the frequency are in the microwave range that is 1 gigahertz to 1000 gigahertz then the parameter like h y z parameter cannot be measured because of the following reasons this is the first reason equipment is not available to measure the total voltage and the total current at the port of the network at any port we cannot calculate the voltage and the current directly the second point is short circuit and the open circuit are difficult to achieve over a broad of frequency in the when we vary the frequency it is not able to uh, achieve the short circuit and the open circuit uh, easily so the third point is active devices such as power transistor and the tunnel diodes will not have the stability for the open circuit and the short circuit condition so because of this reason we go into the s parameter so s parameter is defined as the normalized reflected wave at ith port suppose uh, you want to calculate at port number 1 then calculate the reflected voltage at port number 1 and calculate the incident voltage at port number 1 then it will give you the reflection coefficient at port number 1 so at any port if you want to calculate then this is the normalized reflected wave at ith port divided by normalized incident wave at jth port so s i comma j i is the in reflected port and j is the incident port yes this topic is important because it has come in the two years back only 2021 it was there was a question from the s parameter so this is the definition of the s parameter suppose uh, there is a z naught one characteristic impedance at port number one this is the normalized incident wave normalized incident wave is a1 and the normalized reflected wave is b1 similarly the port number two have the normalized incident wave as a2 and normalized reflected wave as b2 then a3 and b3 and b4 and a4 so if i want to write s11 then it is normalized reflected wave at port number 1 divided by ref normalized reflected wave at port number 1 divided by ref normalized reflected wave at port number 1. If I want to write S12, normalized reflected wave at port number 1 and normalized incident wave at port number 2. Suppose I want to write S42, what does it mean? Normalized reflected wave at port number 4 divided by normalized incident wave at port number 2 so this is b4 upon a2 like this okay so this is how we write so when you will write for all the four boards because there are uh, 16 combinations because you can calculate s13 normalized reflected wave at port number 1 divided by incident wave at port number 4 normalized reflected wave at port number 1 incident wave at port number 4 like that we can calculate the 16 combination so yes so s parameter for all the four port if we write the equations then the we get b1 b2 b3 b4 which is s11 a1 plus s12 a2 plus s13 a3 plus s14 a4 and so on but when we write in the diagonal form we will get like this okay and b that is the normalized reflected wave and a is the normalized incident wave and this is the diagonal element of the s matrix for the 4 cross 4 matrix which is your 4 port device so the diagonal elements are called the reflection coefficient because s11 is nothing but the normalized reflected wave at port 1 divided by normalized incident wave at port 1 so at the same port the ratio of the reflected wave and the incident wave will be called as the reflection coefficient. So the diagonal elements are called as the reflection coefficient. So for the two port device, uh, we can write the two cross two matrix, which is very easy. And uh, yes, we can write like this. Okay. Uh, this is S11 V1. You can write like in the terms of B. Okay. Because how do you normalize any voltage or current? To normalize the voltage and current, let me show you. I think I have written over here. No. 
how do you normalize the voltage and the current suppose you want to normalize this normalized voltage we are saying na? so normalized voltage we are saying normalized reflected voltage normalized reflected voltage so to normalize the voltage you just divide the voltage which is reflected wave which is v naught minus divided by root over characteristic impedance of that port okay root over characteristic impedance of that port right suppose normalized uh, reflected wave at ith port we have written now so this is b i so this b i is v naught i reflected wave at ith port divided by root over characteristic impedance at the ith port so in this way you can calculate the voltages and when you put in the form of voltages instead of b actually it was b1 is equal to s11 a1 plus s12 a2 and this was b2 s21 a1 plus s22 a2 right and suppose i am saying s12 so that is nothing but a b1 upon a2 so what is normalized impedance in terms of voltage this is the reflected wave in port number 1 reflected wave at port number 1 so this is v1 minus divided by characteristic impedance of port number 1 which is z01 into incident wave so what is incident wave at port number 2 so this is port number 2 is v2 plus plus shows the incident wave minus shows the reflected wave what is the characteristic impedance of port number 2 this is z02 so we will get v1 minus divided by v2 plus root over z02 divided by z01 suppose the characteristic impedance of both the ports are same so if the characteristic impedance of both the ports are same then this will become s12 is equal to v1 minus divided by v2 plus so here you can see that s12 is equal to v1 minus divided by v2 plus so this is how you write okay so this is the property of s matrix so what is the properties of s matrix s matrix is always a square matrix so suppose you have three ports then the square matrix uh, that s matrix will be having three cross three that is uh, nine elements will be there okay and uh, the second property is a system or the network is referred to as a reciprocal so when you call the uh, s matrix is reciprocal when s is equal to s transpose or you can say that when s matrix and uh, transpose of s matrix is multiplied with complex conjugate of it then it will give you the unitary matrix and a network is said to be symmetrical when s i j is equal to s j i okay s i j is equal to s j i a network is said to be lossless if it's actually this part actually this part is not here this is here okay this part for the reciprocal we have this and for the symmetrical we have this and this s into s transpose complicate conjugate is for the lossless okay so actually there is one misprint here this is for the lossless so let me write over here okay so this is s matrix and s transpose complex conjugate is equal to identity matrix it is for the lossless and when we take this fact that uh, s and s transpose complex, uh, complex conjugate is giving the identity matrix uh, we can say that when we calculate the s11 mod square plus s12 mod square plus s13 mod square uh, and when uh, these elements are one that means s11 s12 s13 all these are nothing but a first element uh, first uh, column sorry elements of first row elements of first row s11 s12 s13 all are the elements of the first row of s matrix of any n number of port then 
it will be lossless and unitary property if you multiply s i j and s i k and uh, summation i equal to 1 to n it will give you 1 when j is equal to k and when j is not equal to k it will give you the zeroth zero value which is known as zeroth property next is seventh property all the properties of s matrix are important if any of the reference port are moved away from the junction by electrical path beta k l k in the kth port then each of the coefficient s i j involving kth port will be multiplied with the e to the power minus j beta k l k okay suppose uh, there is a two port network okay this is a two port network and uh, you are moving this port port number one by the length l dash okay so previously the s matrix was s11 s12 s21 s22 but after adding this length l dash the new s matrix will become this new s matrix this s matrix new will become it is added in the first port so the element which is having the first port is multiplied with the e to the power minus j beta 1 l 1 okay this is the distance l dash so let's take l dash beta 1 because it is adding in the first port and l dash then similarly s 1 2 e to the power minus j beta l dash at first port Okay, so this is S21. Okay, it is multiplied two times. S11 is coming two times, so it is actually e to the power minus 2j beta l dash because it is coming two times now. So I forgot to write this 2 e to the power minus j 2 beta l dash because it is coming two times 1 1 and here it is e to the power minus j beta 1 l dash. And because in the S22, uh, no port is coming, right? They, this second port is not involving with the first port. So, this S22 will remain intact. So, S matrix for the series element, suppose there is only single element placed with the impedance Z, then the S matrix for the series element is given by z upon z plus 2 z naught where z naught is the characteristic impedance of port number 1 and 2. If both the transmission line this z naught and z naught both the transmission lines are having the same characteristic impedance then the series element will have the S matrix as z upon z plus 2 z naught and 2 z naught upon z plus 2 z naught similarly uh, 2 z naught upon z plus 2 z naught and z upon z plus 2 z naught. So, this is symmetrical and also the reciprocal, okay, because symmetrical we have S21 is equal to S12, okay, and uh, when you calculate the S matrix and S transpose both are same, S matrix and S transpose both are same. So, it is giving you symmetrical, this because of this fact it is a symmetrical and because of this relation it is a reciprocal okay so in this way you can calculate similarly for the shunt element if there is a only single element which is connected in shunt in the network and uh, these two transmission line is connected from the input and output and both are having the characteristic impedance z naught then the s matrix will be given by this formula you can take a screenshot of it and you can uh, you know learn it then we have one question uh, if suppose s matrix is given to you whether it is a reciprocal or not and uh, lossless or not if this is the s matrix given to you then whether it is a reciprocal or not and lossless or not so for lossless what is the condition for lossless the condition is s11 mod square and s12 mod square has to be equal to 1 okay for lossless so s11 is 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 square 
plus zero point nine square because we are taking mod. So now this is zero point eight five, right? Which is not equal to one. So it is not lossless. Not lossless, right? And how do you calculate the reciprocal or not? So the reciprocal, the S matrix is equal to S transpose. So it is following the reciprocal. So it is the reciprocal, but uh, not lossless. So not lossless, but reciprocal. So option C. Okay. So there is a gate and ESC test is also running. So the link is given in the description. So you can go and check the full length mock test, subject wise test. Everything is there in the link and in each test series we have the 65 questions completely uh, having the uh, standard of gate and detailed mock analysis is done. Virtual calculator is there. So this is it for the today's session. So thank you for watching this session guys. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and you can uh, join the telegram group also. The link is given and also the telegram name is also in front of you and you can also visit our website and uh, take the advantage of the different contents free contents available for the downloads okay so thank you very much for uh, watching this session let's meet in the next session tomorrow at 10 am for the communication marathon class thank you